very it clumsy. Looked, it looked like a pub challenge. It's very it? clumsy. Sunday, Sunday league challenge it was. So how has that happened? Confidence is Harry Maguire. He's not... You know, we always... When you hear us all talking about composure, we, you generally... People bring it up when you're in front of goal. But that is a complete and utter lack of composure defensively because he obviously doesn't know where the ball is and he actually just doesn't care. Because if you're actually thinking about it, you wouldn't do that. He's just barged into the back of Odegaard, nowhere near the ball. Can I he's, give him his, a... mind's, his mind's just not clear. Can I you say confidence, right? Yeah, now? but can I give him a little bit of an out? And please shoot me down if I'm wrong. I think Harry Maguire is trying to get his feet sorted, and maybe his studs have got caught on the turf. <laughs> I'm, no, no, no. I'm trying. I'm trying to offer something. Are you a Man United fan? No, you are. With your you get that collar down. Yeah, Let's on, get that collar down. <laughs> All right, thanks. There you go. Is it done? <laughs> no, there's a little bit more on that side. Right, K, fix him. There we go. Him. There we go. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to find something why yeah, he yeah. would be so clumsy and go through the back of the play. I think you're backing up the wrong tree. Okay. All right, so let's do the biggest takeaways then. What was your biggest takeaway from this game? Yes, it was a friendly, but it was pretty feisty, and we saw these goals coming from Manchester United too. Well, for both teams, I think it's very difficult to, to have a go at Arsenal because the field, 100%, was in Man United's favour. Arsenal, as a football side, are a better team, but in order to be the better team, they need to move the ball quick, and you couldn't do that on this field. This, this is a, a grass field put on top of a synthetic surface, and the ball slow. So that, that really hurts Arsenal. So it's very difficult to have a go at them. On the positive side for United, they kind of just reminded me of what they did all last season. Yeah. You know, they weren't dominating teams. They weren't, they weren't battering teams. They were efficient. They won, in, they won a lot of games by just being aggressive and taking their opportunities. And they got two great ones in the first half and they... You've got to say they took them really well. It sort of reminded me a little bit like when they played the Carabao Cup final against Newcastle. And Newcastle, for large parts of the game, were the better side. But Man United now have got know-how, haven't they? Bruno yeah. Fernandes and the likes of Casemiro and Varane and Lissandra Martinez, they know how they're streetwise. And I think that was what I took away from Man United's performance. I wouldn't read too much into Arsenal's performance because a lot of new players playing together. But the, 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 the streetwise and the nous that Man United have got is, is certainly improving. What I do want to mention is that there's a shootout at the end of this game. Obviously, it finished 2-0 in regular time. And later on in this ESPN FC show, we will show you that. Uh, but we'll talk about Lissandro So Martinez. if Arsenal win that, do they win the game? <laughs> oh, I'm actually sure you know. It's <laughs> a draw, isn't it? I don't, know. I don't like having a centre-back who's that small. I, I, I just don't. I think he's at a disadvantage when the ball's thrown into the box against players who might be thick as mince, but who actually are going to be big and strong and maybe six foot two. So he's at a disadvantage from that point. Mm. But as far as his challenges, there's no question that the way Martinez plays the game, it gets everybody around yeah. him going. It gets the crowd going, and that's fine. But it's not fine when you give away free kicks like that when you've made a bad decision defensively in an area where against a Messi or a Ronaldo or somebody like that, there's a chance they're going to stick that in the back of the net. You know, you're basically given the opposition an opportunity to score because you made a bad decision defensively. If he can, if he can control his aggression and use it at the right time, then absolutely you want him in your team. Fortunately, you won't have to face either of those guys <laughs> next season, Messi or Ronaldo. But you understand the point. Yeah, absolutely. Do you understand it? No, I got it. I, I, I get it. If, you, if, you, if you're that rash and give away dangerous or cheap free kicks on the edge of the box. There's players in the Premier League that can expose you from free kicks from that sort of area. I look at it from a midfield player's point of view, playing just in front of him, and I think he sets the tone. As long as he's not rash and you know, getting a yellow card every game and getting red cards. Okay. But I think he sort of sets the tone where he gets you at it in midfield, and all of a sudden you're feeding off his energy. Like Stevie said, the crowd are then up for it, and then all of a sudden you've got a team of battlers and winners. I think he's, he's good. I think he sets the tone. So one thing we do know, obviously we didn't see Andre Onana today, a new goalkeeper at Manchester United, very positive sign. One thing we do know is that Eric Ten Hag has been very vocal about wanting an elite number nine, especially to, to work on completing this squad. But Jadon Sancho has been playing through the middle, scored a goal in this game. What did you no. make of him? No. <laughs> <laughs> a normal centre-back or a normal professional would play would do and not completely with on such an easy ball, then we're talking about what else, what did he do in the game? That's not his position. It's okay. not. It's not. How, how it's big not. a season is this for him? Oh, it's huge. And, you know, I, I think psychologically it was a period where Ten Hag took him out of the team, didn't he, for about a month. 
and he worked on the off the field problems that he had, which was great because it shows the manager, I think Ten Hag comes across to me like he's fair. And I think he gives every player an opportunity to bounce back. He's done the same with Marcus Rashford. Remember when he was late for a team meeting and he, he dropped him for a game. But I think overall, I think Ten Hag's fair. And I think for Jadon Sancho now, because we know the talent that he's got. We've all watched him at Dortmund. We recognise the player that's in there. He's now, when you play for a club like Man United, he's got to start producing. But he's not going to produce if he's in the wrong place. No. And the wrong place is centre-forward. But he could certainly, he could stand up no, but he could stand up in a conversation and say, well, well my, immediate, my immediate target is to try and get Anthony out the side if he's going to play on the right-hand side. Right. I think Rashford will probably play off the left-hand side, whether he goes to the middle or not. But if you simplify it and say, well, where can I get in this team? The direct competition is Anthony on the right-hand side. And then you're looking at two players that are battling. And with Anthony's form last season, second season, hopefully he's better. Sancho might have more chance of starting. Obviously, we don't want to take too much away from the fact that it was a friendly, but what did you make of Declan Rice today? You can't tell. You really can't tell. Um, I mean, is this his first game? I yep. mean, he's, he's yep. it's, again, his he's first game. But I think, I think it tells you that when you go for the amount of money he went for, the spotlight's on him. You know, we're, we're, we're looking at every single thing he does, good and bad. Um, and so he better, get, he better get fit, first of all. Better get 100% fit, get sharp. Uh, because everybody's going to be judging on what he produces for Arsenal. Not how great he was for West Ham, that doesn't matter anymore. It's how do you play now with the spotlight really on you. And today is really not the day to do that. I think that's the least of Mikel Arteta's worries. I was watching um, Erdegaard to the right-hand side, but more uh, Kai Havertz on the left of that three. And Declan Rice is a fantastic player. But if Mikel Arteta is going to persist with playing uh, uh, Kai Havertz in a midfield role, he's got to make sure offensively he does well because he's a good player and he gets in the box and gets his numbers, assists and goals. But defensively, I'm not sure what Kai Havertz is going to do in terms of is he going to be the player that's going to be tracking back. So when you look at that midfield, it's amazing on paper. But if you, if you don't see the ball, and obviously it's Arsenal, so to see a lot of the ball against the majority of sides, defensively, maybe other teams in the Premier League think they can get at Kai Havertz and Odegaard tracking them back or taking them back. There was once in the second half, you kind of saw what maybe Arteta thinks that Havertz can give him with a late run in the box. Coming late mm. and getting on the end of a header, which he did in this game, just got underneath him, put it over the bar. So you can see, I think, what he's trying to get out of him going forward. But I'm with Don as far as the other side of the game. I don't know what he gives you. Any other thoughts on the other signings? Havertz, Timber? Timber, I thought, done well. Um, I just think it's very early when you look at someone like Kai Havertz who's been at the club a couple of weeks and Declan Rice has had probably three or four training sessions and then his first 45 minutes or, out, or an hour that he'd done. You can't read too much into it. It's a pre-season game. As I said before, it's the minutes. It's the welfare. It's the, it's the, if that's what Mikel Atat is going to do in terms of that three then Declan Rice is now forging a relationship with Odegaard to his right side and Havertz to his left and the defenders that are playing behind him and the full-backs are going forward. So it takes a little bit of time. OK, question for you guys. Who finishes above who at the end of the Premier League season? Manchester United or Arsenal? I absolutely think Arsenal will finish ahead of them. Why? Um, because Arsenal at the best, I think, are a step ahead of Manchester United at the best. Uh, again, we won't, they won't be playing, Arsenal won't be playing on pitches of the, like this one today where it's slow. Um, when you have good players and better players, when you've got a nice fast surface, which we get every week in the Premier League, regardless of whether it's home or away, Arsenal will take advantage of that. I don't think Man United are as good and move the ball as well and are, are as dangerous going forward normally as, as Arsenal. So I think Arsenal still a step ahead of Man United. So, and they got, and they got no centre forward. Yeah. Right. So, so Would this, that change it? Yes. So this is coming from a man two weeks ago that said Arsenal might struggle for top four, but I'm going to go with Steve because of the signings that they've Who made. Said? No, 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 I said. Oh, you did. So I said. What you meant, me? Let's no, no, not no, get no, mistaken. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> no, I said a couple of weeks ago. I think Arsenal might struggle for top four before they signed Kai Havertz, Declan Rice, and Timber. So now to answer your question, I think it's Arsenal. I don't think it's by a massive margin, but me and Stevie both wonder. Without Man United having a number nine with 25 goals, can Marcus Rashford have the same season this season 
as he had last because he was incredible last yeah. season. But let me just quickly put it to you. If they did get that elite number nine, Manchester United, does it change your mind on who finishes ahead Depends of Depends who it is, Kay. Right. If it's someone like Harry Kane, then absolutely. But if it's someone like Rasmus Hoyland, who's a very, very good, exciting player, I think he got nine goals for Atalanta last season. So you can't really say because of his talent coming into a new team, he's going to be back in 20 or 25 in his first season. So... The number nine is so important for them. Yeah, and obviously there's a lot of talk about it being that man as well. All right, a lot more friendly action coming up for you across the network. That was one of the games. Manchester United taking on Arsenal. Look at all of this. Real Madrid, Milan. Manchester United against Wrexham. Real Madrid against Manchester United. Barca taking on Arsenal. Juve against Milan. And El Clasico already before La Liga season even begins on Saturday, July 29. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.